possible insertion sites uh, in the maxilla and their characteristics are described in the table. The buccal alveolus. For implantation in the maxillary buccal alveolus, uh, precautions must be taken to prevent injury not only to the teeth but also to the maxillary sinus. Even in the case of sinus invasion, as long as the maxillary sinus is not severely inflamed, there are no unfavorable sequelae uh, if the implant is removed. Uh, the greatest advantage of this area is uh, the easy access for placement and engagement of the implant. Although cortical bone is relatively thin compared to other insertion sites, it is able uh, to provide enough stability for orthodontic anchorage in adult patients. In the picture, you can see uh, sites for selection in, for implantation in the maxilla. The safe zones are indicated in blue, while the danger zones are indicated in red. Two major problems are associated with the use of buccal alveolar implants. The risk of root injury and implants are placed in a small interdental area. Even with proper treatment protocols, including off-center and oblique insertion uh, at the area between the second premolar and the first molar, 3 mm of mesiodistal tooth movement is not feasible. If more than 3 mm of uh, uh, movement is needed, placement of another implant may be useful after the teeth have moved 3 mm mesiodistally. Both the distance between the roots and the buccolingual space are correlated with the risk of root injury and the amount of possible tooth movement. The buccolingual space is particularly important in securing available space. That is, uh, there is less available space where the buccolingual dimension is narrow, such as uh, at the anterior alveolar area, premolar area and areas where expansion has been accomplished previously with expansion appliances. The clinician should use caution uh, when placing implants in these areas and remember that easier distal movement of the adjacent tooth is more likely to be limited. Insertion site and angle. When an orthodontic implant is inserted in the maxillary buccal area, slight adjustments in anterior-posterior positioning may be needed depending on the plan for anterior-posterior movement of adjacent teeth. For molar distalization, the insertion position is located 1 to 2 mm distal uh, to the imaginary central line between two teeth. Uh, for molar protraction, the insertion position is placed 1 to 2 mm mesial to the imaginary central line. If there is uh, to be no uh, mesiodistal movement of the adjacent teeth, the insertion position is located on the center line between the molar and the premolar. For the intrusion, uh, the position of insertion must be located sufficiently apical, uh, otherwise the implants will restrict further movement as the teeth are intruded. Generally, a mini implant uh, should be inserted near the mucogingival junction. For this reason, at the start, the tip of the implant should be placed about 1 mm apically from the mucogingival junction, depending on the diameter of the implant. The vertical position of the implant should generally be slightly closer to the root apex than to the mucogingival junction. The closer the implant is positioned to the root apex, uh, the greater the intrusive force uh, that can be obtained. When the attached gingiva is narrow or the sulcus is shallow, insertion toward the root apex is uh, restricted. The implant head should never be exposed more laterally than the vestibular fornix. Insertion at an oblique angle allows for the use of more space 
uh, it reduces the possibility of root injury and increases the surface in contact with cortical bone. The vertical position of the implant should be located sufficiently apical to the ovular crest to avoid injury of the crest. An implant head or an extension wire should not be located lateral to the mucobuccal fold because of excessive stress from facial muscles such as the cheeks. The implant should be positioned medial to the mucobuccal fold. An oblique insertion is recommended in cases in which an adjacent tooth moves uh, uh, mesiodistally because it provides more space. However, it is uh, preferable that the implant be inserted perpendicularly when cortical bone will be uh, perforated.